you know what i like about canada what i don't like about canada why you should come to canada why you shouldn't come to canada basically you can't do anything that's why there's no point stressing on it because nothing is in your hands hello everyone welcome to mars vlogs and uh, this particular um release of the video is a little special because um i'm completing my one year in canada today i took it i mean i'm taking it the previous day but i'll be uploading on 10th of august which is the day i landed in canada uh so basically um i traveled during covid so it took me a long time to reach here because i i traveled through um uh egypt and then reached here and the journey was like too good okay like obviously covid you know you had so many restrictions the whole travel was messed up and everything like went through all that and came here and i can't believe i'm actually completing a year in canada like survive the first year so i thought i should actually make a video uh, to tell you guys like just give you a brief about you know what i like about canada what i don't like about canada why you should come to canada why you shouldn't come to canada so not like a pro and con video uh just a normal video of my experience in this last one year so first of all being in saskatchewan i should start with the weather well uh i wouldn't say it is a con okay because uh as long as you dress properly like in the sense layer yourself with uh various clothes during winter like the winter is quite harsh here right like it can get to around um uh, Minus fifty and all, like we've seen minus fifty, uh, but that is just like a day or two. But usually, it it ranges between minus twenty to minus twenty thirty or thirty five uh, during peak winters. So I really haven't faced much issues here with the winter because, thankfully, I was able to get good winter clothes for myself, and uh, due to which. i was able to actually uh, you know overcome that and it's not that you have to spend a lot for winter clothes and then come here and then you know like don't buy it from india and come you know i've already told in a couple of my videos don't do that come here and buy it i got my stuff from walmart so i am a person who is a hardcore fan of thrift stores walmart all the cheap stuff okay like i'm not a person who spends anything much on luxury brands or like you know this has to be this brand and all i'm not that kind of a person even if you take me to some second hand shop i'll pick up stuff and come that's me okay but you guys if you want you can come here and buy from like branded stores and spend money which uh, you should be okay with so winter i wouldn't say it's a con neither is a pro but then you can survive there are lot of questions that people have asked regarding winter how do i survive do you think we can survive especially for a person like me who's coming from kerala that also trivandrum uh, you know how humid and warm and sweaty it is from there to here yeah it is a transition and obviously because i used to actually ha uh, put on a blanket in trivandrum okay uh, that me coming to saskatchewan with minus 50 yeah, it was it was something that even my family didn't think i'll survive but i did so you can also survive uh second thing what i would say is um, when i talk about winter i should also talk about the summer the summer in canada is beautiful like you will really enjoy it you will really appreciate summer in canada because within uh, like couple of months you'll see winter right so now i'm already dreading winter but uh, summer is really really good in canada so that's one thing uh the next thing is um what i would say is um family obviously uh, when you come to canada you will miss your family you will miss your loved ones you know like turn around yeah mm. you will miss your loved ones mainly because uh obviously you're away from home especially as a student when you come here you don't have any base here right like unless and until you have somebody who is um, here like your family members or some relative or something in my case i didn't have anybody here so i had to like come here and start from scratch which many of the students had to like 75% of the students didn't have any support system here so that way if you look at it uh, obviously you'll miss family but technology is so good like you can have zoom calls you can have whatsapp calls you can have that call this call all the calls in the world and then you will actually feel your family is here so that's not a problem and then you get friends like family out here who really supports you during tough times you know we are all going through it together so it's a it's a beautiful experience 
if you take it in the right spirit obviously you can also hit depression during this time mainly because see we've all been through that I, even i'm not hiding that i didn't go through a tough time here like like last december if you ask me 2021 uh, december wasn't good for me because we had a break we didn't have classes i was just sitting at home i used to stay alone and that uh 10 15 days was like really bad you miss home you miss family it's christmas it's new year and you're all by yourself so that was um one phase of my life which i didn't enjoy much uh, so other than that i've never uh, felt that you know that um, what do you say that uh, i really need maybe it's me but there are a lot of people who miss family okay uh, then some other things is if you ask me about jobs there are a lot of uh, people who are asking about part-time jobs will i get a job will i get a full-time job after my studies that this and all you will okay don't worry guys like um just believe in yourself come here there are a lot of people here who found jobs like part-time jobs is easily available it's just that you know you need to know where to put in your resume or talk to people talk to your friends network find the right kind of openings there is work from home jobs like part-time jobs like tim hortons kfc those kind of jobs you also get like uh, jobs in maybe you know offices if you want uh if you ask me i was working for a uh call center kind of setup until i finish work because i didn't want to like travel too much you know spend too much of time outside the house so i opted for that so which was very very uh flexible for me uh and the schedules were also something that i could choose um now i have graduated it's been uh like what three to four months since i graduated and i've got a job in my specific field that is uh supply chain management most of you might know whoever is not tuned in the channel before Mm, I had completed supply chain management from Saskatchewan Polytechnic and uh, I have got a job as a logistics coordinator. Okay, so jobs are not that difficult. But at the same time, what I would like to tell you is like, don't keep a high expectation of what experience you have, what education you have in back in India. If you take my case, I have around 13 years of experience. I'm an MBA graduate. I came here and did a certificate diploma. But if you ask me, I started from scratch okay so career wise don't like expect miraculous things to happen but slow and steady wins the race right so if you're ready for the slow and steady race come here uh it will take some time at least one or two years for students like us to actually get settled down and get a pr and all those things i am in saskatchewan so sinp is here i've also opted for a job that supports that so uh, hopefully things will work out it's a risk many people also ask me should i take a two year course should i take a one year course i have personally take a, taken a one year course and come here and i've taken a risk of actually getting into a job and staying with them for pr purposes so you can do the same thing or else i also have friends who've come here taken a one year job i mean i'm a one year studies then they have opted to Mm, take the second year that's the best option i feel because you can gauge like whether you should you want to work you want to like uh, study if you want to study which course you want to study like rather than taking a two-year course from there where you pay up the entire fees and all those things it's always better <clears throat> that you come here do a one-year course and then you know you can uh, take a second year course in case you feel that uh, you need to uh have a three-year work permit it's like up to you okay but if you have any doubts on that you can comment below i can answer that so i've got a lot of comments on insta which i prefer uh, youtube even though i'm active i'm not that active like that i'm in insta so if you have any doubts ping me in insta and i'll be more than happy to answer your questions the next thing okay career is done i've just written it down so that i don't miss on any points so financial okay financial uh that's one question that you need to ask yourself see first of all you're spending a lot on coming here and, and studying so that's like a huge lump sum then you're paying up your gic which is your fund to stay here and all those things so you need to be a little financially stable or a little financial backing is required when you come here like don't think that you know you'll come here and make and make lots of money uh <laughs> you will eventually i guess but then uh or most of the students starts with a 12 dollar minimum i'm i'm only talking about saskatchewan i don't know about other places but it's a 12 dollar minimum that um, any person who comes here especially students who starts with that's a minimum wage and you can work only 20 hours okay so if you calculate what it's around 900 dollars per month 
that's what you make as a student okay uh, and you also get your thousand dollar GIC fees this is what happens as a student so it's not that you can save a lot and save up for your next month uh, next year education maybe people have done that see I haven't personally compromised on the way I live here in Canada uh, obviously being 35 plus you can't compromise too much on the way you stay the way uh, you want to stay like uh, I didn't want to like share a room with people and all those things there are people who have done that like shared a house with people if you're comfortable doing that you can save a lot of money I know a lot of boys girls all these people who have done that and they obviously they would have a better bank balance than me but yeah I wanted my private privacy or private space uh, which I uh, weighed more than the money I save okay so that's one thing uh, and uh, as a full-time employee it's obviously forty dollars I mean 40 hours that you can work or some are even working more but then again it starts with a $12 minimum some are lucky with $15 so it's up to you so it's not that you can mint money from the time you come here okay so be prepared get that on your head and then come here because don't be in that assumption that okay I'll come here and make money and pay my debts debts back in India and then you know like clear my loans and all it will take some time but you will because uh, if there's a will there's a way you will okay and so that's that uh, some things that I like okay let's stop talking about all the uh, things that I might not like or you might not like let's talk about things that we like first of all Canada is a very supportive country for immigrants uh, they have several options of immigration obviously it takes time any country you can't like expect you expect any country to accept you like just like that you can't just walk in and be an immigrant I mean a uh, citizen or a PR holder right so obviously there's a process but um, take it as and when it comes step by step like there's no point actually uh, you know worrying too much about it or um, stressing over it because you can't do anything basically you can't do anything that's why there's no point stressing on it because nothing is in your hands like you submit an application you pay the fee and then you wait and then again they'll ask you for some like I apply for my student permit then I apply for Prashant's visa then I apply for my work permit so all that you can do is to apply and wait okay otherwise you don't have any other option right so there's no point stressing uh, but I would say that work-life balance is good like I'm slogging my ass here because uh, obviously Prashant is on a visit visa so until he gets a job and he gets his visa that's the structure but otherwise like as a student or uh, as a couple if you're coming here uh, it's quite chilled out like people are all like a little more laid back uh, five to six o'clock you're done with work you come home and it, the system is very different you uh, you have to be an early riser in most cases can you believe I get up at 5 45 in the morning I, I could never believe that but I'm doing that now mainly because my job demands it I have to be at work by 7 so 5 45 to get up but I'm home back back home by 5 so I can have to like take part-time jobs deliveries at this and all so work work life balance is good then uh, you have a lot of options like as a student you can bring your spouse your children and all obviously there are a lot of condition restriction all those things attached to it but then they're giving you an option so if you're lucky enough if you put your application in properly you do document it properly it should work out so in our case also we are working for Prashant's work visa Prashant is my husband so if we were, were waiting for his work visa but I've heard cases where people's uh, dependent visa like I have one of my friend whose uh, kids visa were rejected so it all depends on how well you uh, put in your application okay so that is good now uh, one thing that I wanted to personally tell is uh, I have been in marketing for like 10 plus years okay and at the end of it I was actually not enjoying it much because in India actually I don't I think they don't understand the concept of marketing it's more of sales these days okay digital marketing that marketing this marketing all that is coming up but then it's more of sales that you know people push you into so I was getting a little fed up or you know I was like not enjoying it much anymore so I think it's it's the right strategy to change your field if you want to okay so from marketing I've come to supply chain management and logistics which is not even correlated but since I did a course here on that and since uh, 
uh, I found an interest in it. I tried getting into a similar job. It's not that you know I got into the job just like that. Obviously, people referred me. I had to get in, go for the interview, that this and all. But then, uh, by God's grace, I've got into a similar field. So, if you want to change your field, get into a totally different field which is not even related to your experience, and all. This is one way you can do it. But always make sure that you take relevant jobs to your course that you did or something that you enjoy because it's like a lifelong thing that you'll have to do, right? So just make sure about that then 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 uh what else do i say expenses well a lot of people ask me about how do i spend my day or how do uh i mean how is the money situation out here well spending my day it just goes off okay like um Mm -hmm. I have work every day like it's just Saturday and Sunday we get a break that we might take deliveries at this and all I'll do a detailed vlog maybe some other time I don't want to like fill this vlog with that but I'll tell you about expense expense uh, see you need to be careful it's not that uh, I, I, I'm I here with my husband and it's on a single income okay so it's a little difficult to save at this point of time but we are doing part times and all those things by which we can survive but if two people are working or if you're here alone, it's quite comfortable. Like whatever minimum income that you make is quite comfortable for you to actually survive. Okay. Or even save. I, I know a lot of people who save this. Mm, so it's not that, you know, you need a lot of money here. You get good rentals here. Uh, I'm specifically talking about Saskatchewan because I'm here. And I've stayed in Saskatoon, Regina and Moose So I'm telling... Uh, considering all three so if you want a comparison video of Saskatoon mostly on Regina let me know in the comments below and I can make one video regarding that mm -hmm. so expense it is expensive here I wouldn't say it is cheap like especially grocery and all it's expensive fuel is okay uh, buying a car as a student see if you're a person who's used to having cars and don't want to travel by bus and all most you especially you know like um, the bus Bus scene is not that great there. Uh, Regina is asking us good. So if you need to buy a car initially, please get cash. Okay. Like or uh, because getting financing uh, during that phase of your uh, student life is very difficult. I tried so many uh, types of uh, agencies and all those things I couldn't get through. I've heard some people have but I had no luck with it. Um, but what you can do is just get like 4000 or 5000 dollars which is like uh two to three lakhs in india as cash out here and buy it in cash you get good deals good cars in good condition here so that's one thing you can do uh, other than that overall it has been a great experience mm, let me think and uh, another thing i what i, what I want to tell you is i don't know that's like two okay well uh, what I wanted to tell you was actually I was supposed to go out and take a video but I'm too lazy so I thought okay let me just keep it in my uh, living area and then take it okay sorry about that um, yeah what I wanted to tell you was about the lifestyle change even though if you're saying like it's a very balanced lifestyle I'm getting the right angle okay even though uh, even though I said that it's a very balanced lifestyle, this, that and all. If you are a person who's used to pubbing and going out and movies and that, this and all. It'll be very less compared to how it was back in India. Mainly because of the affordability. As a student, you can't afford so much. Uh, second thing, there are very less options. Obviously, when you move to places like Toronto or Vancouver and all, you might have bigger options. Here also, there's everything. Okay, Rajana Saskatchewan is really good. Even Mojo is good for that fact. You have everything. Just that uh, it, it won't be as grand as how it is in India. We are spoiled for choices in India, right? Like you get out, press something in your phone, a cab arrives. Then you get down, you want to order something, you get it through Swiggy. By, by the way, we have food and all. Set, I mean, the setting here is quite good. But then I was actually uh, always worried about how I'll travel here because I was so used to Ola and uber back in india so that facility is not here cabs are really expensive you either need to take a bus and initially i didn't have a car so you know travel by bus and all which is uh 
I mean, I didn't find it difficult. Like it's so convenient and uh, what do you say? The infrastructure is so good here that you really won't feel it. At least in Saskatoon and Regina, you won't feel it. Mostly a little bit. Yeah, there's one day that I actually cried while walking, mainly because it was peak winter. And somehow I was not enjoying my job, so I was trying to look out for another job. So I was like out with my resume, walking, 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 walking. Like in, in Jan, I think, it, it was around minus 36. And I was wearing my uh, winter jacket and gloves and what, I don't know, like only my eyes. Were, and your eyelashes also freezes up. And that day, I really cried. Like I was crying and walking mainly because I was like, why, you know, why did I come? You know, why did I do that? You know, I shouldn't have come. Like, uh, I could have just stayed in India. All those thoughts went in. But then you need to have that breakdown to understand what all you have sacrificed and why you should fight further, right? To achieve what you want in life. So, it's been a beautiful journey for me. I hope that for you guys also it is the same. I know a lot of people who have watched the videos, who have come to Canada. I hope their experience is good. I know a lot of people who are watching the video, who wants to come to Canada. I hope your experience is good. And those who are aspiring to come, I hope yours is also good. Like, it's never a bad experience. I have heard very few people going back to India because Canada is really, really bad. People are nice. I have not faced any kind of racist comments or anything. Okay, like one or two instances wherein, like, you'll be looked upon, but nothing major. Uh, I've had a happy experience, and now uh, I'm just hoping that my work permit comes through, and then Prashant's work permit comes through. We get a PR, so it's always a life of hope. Uh, hopefully, everything will work out. I hope you guys enjoy the videos uh, and thank you for supporting us for all these months. It's not been been a long journey, but obviously I've not been very um, frequent in putting videos also because um, first of all, it's a busy schedule. Second thing, I just don't want to post videos on a daily basis, weekly basis, not without having proper content. So I thought, okay, when and as and when I have content, I'll post and that'll be more useful for you guys. A uh, couple of other things that I wanted to tell you is thanks a lot for supporting. Uh, keep subscribing, uh, sharing it to your friends. Feel free to ping me in Insta. I'm always active there. I can surely help you out. And I was also thinking that, you know, I have a lot of requests of actually writing SOPs. So I was even wondering whether I should start a service for that. Mm, in fact, I've also been talking to people about how I can help you guys with SOPs because I, I've, I've seen a lot of people actually having uh, issues with writing the SOPs. Mm, so I'm giving it a thought. I'm brainstorming the idea. I think I've also put uh, an Insta post on it whether you guys are interested, which majority of you guys told you are interested. So I'm just working out the financials, how much should I charge, uh, what should be the data I need from you guys to write the SOP. Like obviously I need to also be careful because I'm not an immigration consultant. So I can't guarantee like you know you will get the visa or not but at least I can try. Mm, whenever I have free time I can help you guys out of it. So these are the things. If you are interested in me writing the SOP let me know. If you think that's a good idea. I just wanted to run it with you guys also to see if it's it's a good enough idea to invest my time in and also you know help you guys out with it. Uh, so that's it guys. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the journey with me for the last one year. I still can't believe I've uh, actually completed one year here. It's not been easy. Uh, I think more more than financially, physically and all. Physically obviously I thought I'll not survive. But then I did. But emotionally it's been... It's been a ride, like from there to here and like what not. Let's not get there, okay? So I hope you have a great day ahead. Uh, enjoy yourself. Stay blessed. Bye.